first things first, I want to know if you could describe your character, Aked, in a sentence or three words, what would you say? Just a crazy, toxic nutcase um, with a lost view of the world. I think um, I think Aked has strong values that we all believe in, which is, you know, family values and and love for um, blood, but that could be misconstrued in a lot of ways, and there could be a toxicity that lies behind that. And um, I think there's more of a desperate love that lies behind him, and this desperation of feeling seen and being heard. And I, you know, all the characters, I think they have at least one person they can talk to or lean on, and a kid is really just sits in the middle sitting alone with either somebody telling him what to do or telling him that he's a little off the deep end. So um, he's a very, you know, loud, loud character. But um, I think by the end of the season, you kind of peel back certain layers of him and you see the reasoning behind why he could be so aggressive. Yeah, and that kind of goes into my next question, because I wanted to know, how would you say we find him at the beginning of Full Circle versus where we, we are left with him by the end? Yeah, I think in the beginning, he, Aked is definitely the villain, the main villain, the main bad guy. Every time he pops up on the screen, something's going down, and some, 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 some mess is about to happen. Um, but then by the end... I think he fits in line with all the other characters of, of you're confused as to whether they're good or bad. You know, um, I think you, you, you start to kind of feel bad because you realize he's leading himself into his own downfall. And, um, you know, he often preaches that he's alone, that he doesn't have any family. And so the more he says it, the more you start to realize, well, this is his only thing. That's probably the only thing this man thinks about. And so it really drives him to do these kind of crazy things. So hopefully by the end, you um, you start to question if there's a little bit of a hero in him um, or not. Yeah. And, you know, just as much as he's a villain, he also does have a little bit of a heart. Um, oh, how yeah. that, <laughs> and how, how would you say that kind of humanizes him for those that are watching? Um, yeah, I think, I think it just, I think all the, the, you know, the, the best villains are the villains that show a little bit of hero for a second, you know, where you kind of understand why I think it's hard to latch on a character where you don't understand their reasoning behind their actions, you know, you know, a murderer might murder somebody. And the first thing you think of is, wow, this monster, this criminal, this evil person. And then they'll make a whole documentary about this guy. And it's like, whoa, he had mother abuse, abuse as a child and not fed and was kept inside and uh, hates women because he was abused by women, you know, or, or you know, there's always a reasoning to why someone's evil. And so I think it's a job as an actor for whoever you're playing to give human ask, you know, something human to the character. You know, if you're playing Adolf Hitler, how do you showcase the human in him and the reasons why he did what he did to make the movie at least somewhat watchable, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you know, with the show being called Full Circle, is there anything about breathing life into Aked that has been a full circle moment for your career as an actor? Well, I mean, I'm from New York, so, Every day on set was really literally a full circle moment. I think I made that joke an annoying amount of times on set. I was just like, hey, full circle. This is where I used to do this, this is where I used to do that. You know, we're shooting in Washington Square Park, and that's where I used to hang out. And there's always a rap circle going on. I used to go and run and rap inside the circle. And now it's 3 a.m. and I'm with Steve Soderbergh shooting an HBO show. Uh, so, so for me personally, this was very full circle. Um, in terms of Aked and I, I hope we are very different people. I, I, uh, I, I found the human in him and I, I found love for him and understanding him, but uh, he definitely goes about things not how I want to. So this was fun to stretch myself and play a character that um, I don't necessarily want to latch on to. Um, I want to breathe into it, but um, not necessarily take all the stuff that I incorporated. And in. I almost put my worst, my worst thoughts and my worst um insecurities into him and and kind of let that go 
Yeah, and speaking of letting go, how do you kind of reset when you have a character who is as dynamic and deep and dark as I can? Like, how do you kind of regroup and reset to, to go on to your next project or go back to life as you as you will? Um, well, you know, I think it's a different day. Hopefully actors um, care about mental health and all that, you know? Uh, I think there was a time where acting didn't require mental health and you can get so lost uh, without caring for yourself. And I love the idea of that. I just am not interested in, in leading my life that way. So for me, um, it's so important for me to always keep Jarrell close. Uh, and so, you know, when I play a kid and I'm grand angry and I'm screaming and I'm yelling, um, it takes me about 30 minutes to an hour to calm down. But in that 30 minutes to an hour, I, you know, I'm around a friend or I got music in my ear or I'm chilling or trying to go smoke something real quick. <laughs> um, just keep the edge off. But I'm, I still am so human and I'm still um, aware of how healthy I would like to be when I get older. So even characters like I played in When They See Us and stuff, um, I, I just make sure there's a, a wall up and I don't get too lost. But um, some things require more, you know. Um, I can, for me, just require pulling from anger and from frustration and things that I'm frustrated about that I never talked about. So it did help me. It's almost like therapy in a way to just yell. Not often do you get to hold a fake gun and just wave it at people and start yelling. So uh, even though I'm acting and doing it for a part, uh, the human in me is like taking taking time to let out certain things that I've, you know, that I haven't been able to process in my life. So um, it was cool. It was cool to do it. I love that. And you've been killing the game. I'm currently um, watching I Am a Virgo right now. Yeah. Like, a um, whole, whole different character. Yeah. Character. So, like, seeing the, like, screening this and then uh, watching that before bed at night, I'm like, come on, the versatility. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love it. Who is this man really, though? <laughs> like, who is yeah. this? Man? <laughs> I, hope, I hope to always keep that question in, in, in like, my in the audience's head is who is he really? Because um, I think all of our favorite actors, we don't know much about them. We only we can only see characters. And I think that's the beauty of an actor. You know, we don't we, we, we don't know what Denzel likes to have for dinner and we don't need to. We just know how he could be badass in movies. You know, yes. yes. Thank you for keeping that mystique alive. Um, yeah. And, you know, as much as he is this sort of complex mastermind, Aket is also very much a student of the game. What would you say has been the biggest lesson that he learns this season? And is it anything that you've learned simply by portraying him? Um, you know, I think before a kid could learn his lesson, it's too late. So I think I think the whole show he's trying to learn. And I think that's what's so frustrating about his character about watching him is that it's like, come on, man, like just do better, be better, act better. But um this is just a character so lost in his own world. And Ed, Ed wrote him to be uh, very dark and very brooding because um, I think his youth, I think he isn't old enough to understand what he's even feeling. But at the same time, he's no child. You know, he sits in this weird balance of like, I'm a grown man, but I am a total kid and I have no idea what I'm doing. And so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it's that. I think it's just that com complexity and it makes him so interesting. And it's fun to play. It's very similar. It relates to me in a lot of ways, feeling old, but also being young. Yeah. And as much as Full Circle is a story about the complexities of human nature, it's also one centered around family and the lengths that people will go through to protect their own. Um, lastly here, tell me, how does this lie true for Akhed and his loved ones specifically? Um, how is what true? Um, Just the lengths and kind of like that he will go through to protect people who he see yeah. or deems his family or himself rather yeah right i i think a kid doesn't spend enough time trying to protect himself um or even the people he should be protecting like his fiance uh you know you get a brief glimpse of his relationship with his fiance because he ruined it off the bat and so um i think um 
Sorry, repeat your question one more time. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, Just talk to me a little bit about, I guess his would be opposite since he doesn't go through those limps to protect the people. Why would you say he... Well, actually... Yeah. yeah, no, no, actually, sorry. Yeah, he he does. He does go through the lens to protect his aunt and to protect his, you know, his namesake and his family's sake. And like I was mentioning earlier, I think he can go a bit overboard with that. You know, I think there's a beauty in family and that family dichotomy to where you want to protect it. But also there's a there's a, a negative side when you latch on too tight out of desperation and you're just holding on. And I think I think a cat came to realize that he would do everything and anything for his family, but they wouldn't really do the same back for him. And I think that is heartbreaking. And I think that in itself is what makes him a bit more relatable. And you kind of go, oh, poor guy, you know? Yeah. And my last question is centered more about you. Um, as I mentioned before, you're just showing off all of your versatility as an actor. But is there a dream role that you um, aspire to step into here? Or what's something that's kind of on your vision board? Um, I mean, there's a couple of things that I would I would love to do. One, uh, you know, I want to work with Denzel Washington very closely in some like real crazy intense. It's me and him going toe to toe. Uh, I also want to work in an ensemble piece with a lot of the upcoming artists that I'm inspired by now. Like I'm trying to be in the same movie as Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield, where we play like bank robbers or something. Mm -hmm. um, and uh. Miles Morales is officially the new, you know, Miles, but he's officially on my vision board. I, you know, I, however, how, however that movie comes out and whoever they choose, it's, it's going to be such a gorgeous film. So to be a part of it in any way would be epic, obviously. Um, and what else? Spike Lee. I want to be in a Spike Lee joint really bad. Um, yeah, like I could go on for like an hour of all the things that I hope to do. Um, and I I want to write something for myself, too. Um, so I have all these ideas. And right now I'm just taking it uh, a project at a time. Absolutely. Well, you're killing it. So thank you so much for your time today, Jarrell. If you could describe Mel Harmony in three words or in, or a cent or in, in, in a sentence, what would you say? I would say she is a a detective <clears throat> who is sensitive, intelligent, and combative. <laughs> I love that. And where would you say that we find her at the beginning of Full Circle versus where we are left with her by the end? I think her, she's kind of trying to grasp onto different elements of her life. Um, in the beginning, you know, I think she's trying to figure out her romantic life, her work life, and trying to figure out where she lands and all of that. And in the end, she kind of, she kind of loses it all in a way. And, um, she, I think has to then deal with in some ways herself without all these like other distractions in a way and um being okay with herself because i think that there are elements that she doesn't like about who she is and she hides from it and so yeah i would say that's kind of her arc yeah and what kind of things like what kind of a space did you have to put yourself in to prepare to breathe life into mel mm -hmm. i think i had to really you know she has a lot of text and lines she's like she when she walks into the room she like takes up space in a room and a lot of that is um you know to, to further her she's, she's trying to get a hold of the situation and all of that but I also think she puts on a lot of fronts and I always wanted to keep her truth like permeating through as well uh that goes through the text because I don't know sometimes she'll like she would be like saying jokes or saying things that were kind of emotionally inappropriate in that moment and I always felt like how do you make her not seem completely emotionally inept 
you know, where she can't read a room or something like that. And I think the thing, I think the thing is that she can read a room, but she chooses to make the decisions she makes anyway. And so I wanted to make sure she kind of always shone through. And so that was a bit of a hard balance to, to strike for me, but I tried. Yeah, you, you did, you did that. And this story involves multiple layers of crime that, and it all intertwines, but your character is sort of leading the charge to get to the bottom of it all. However, how would you say that her inquisitive nature works against her at times? Oh, I think that she gets more involved emotionally and literally into things than she, I mean, maybe just by like bureaucratically shouldn't be involved in, but then also can put herself into danger because she's enmeshing herself in something that she maybe shouldn't, shouldn't be. But I also think she, it's a mix of ambition and also genuinely wanting to like figure out what's going on, um, which is her curiosity, but I think also sort of self-serving her own desire to be validated in her workspace and just validated for herself that she's like, I'm doing a good job at my job. Um, and so, yeah, I think it means that she, yeah, is more emotionally enmeshed than perhaps another professional would be. Um, and she also, you know, she's hanging her own value onto the success of this job as well. So yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that I loved about her because like she was just so entertaining to watch. But at the same time, I felt like I was being read. I was like, dang, girl, <laughs> Like sometimes like I seek that validation in, in my job. Um, So how do you hope that those watching kind of like learn that you don't get validation from the work that you do? Mm. Yeah, I think in general, right, it's like you can't really seek validation from anyone in a way you have to understand your own values and then live by those values and um the only life you can save is your own really in the world both emotionally and um well I guess emotionally largely um and I think Mel she pretends she doesn't struggle with that but she does and you know, I know she's the one that kind of initiates sort of the end of her relationship and all of that. But I think it's an in defense of like, well, if I'm being the problem, then like, just then let's just stop. You know what I mean? Um, versus versus dealing with the rejection of somebody telling her, I can't deal with you uh, because I don't like this part of who you are. She's like, I'll just I'll just put the. I'll do the rejection and um and that to me is sort of a, a, a version of searching for validation and, and searching for someone to like you. And yeah, I think, um, of course we live in a, we are social creatures and we live in a society where social being able to be social is incredibly important um, as we interplay with each other in work and relationships in life. Um, and you have to be able to engage with people, but you also kind of got to just be true to who you are. And, and yeah, so, and I don't know if Mel always is true to who she is. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know if that was kind of philosophical, but in work, yeah, I mean, I mean, take the, take advice from people who you, you admire and, um, and who you respect their work. And if you feel like you need to grow, then do that. And I guess that is a version of validation, but your journey is always going to be different than theirs and you, you got to take your own path. So yeah, it's hard. Everybody goes through that. Absolutely. And what was the most exciting thing for you in bringing Mel to life? Does she mirror any qualities that you have as Zazie? Like what, uh, what was like the most intriguing thing about breathing life into this character for you? I think that Mel and I, which is actually what drew me to the character. I think we're very different. Um, I think that 
I'm more eager to please and be kind of a lubricating element in a room versus um, being standing outside of that. Um, but I also feel like I like the element of her that did fight for herself and that believed in herself. Um, I find when I get in that mindset of like, I really believe that I can do something and there's something in my way. It's really empowering and so motivating to be like, I'm going to get what I want. And so I like, I like that element of Mel and um, yeah, in a way, something, something to learn from her, but I think she has a lot of learning to do too, as, as do I. Yeah. No. As, as, as do we all. Um, and another thing about Full Circle is just that sort of butterfly effect within all the layers of crime that kind of are like intertwining among one another. Because like I had to like, while screening, I had to like stop and rewind a lot. Like, and then I was like, okay, like I have to put my phone away so that I can really <laughs> pay, pay attention. Um, why do you think it's so important um, as a viewer to pay important to, the, to every small detail? And how would you say they all connect by the end? Yes, I think that, um, well, because there's also there's sort of multiple stories going on. There's this like crime syndicate, this, um, you know, these Guyanese teenagers and the, and the people kind of puppeteering their actions. And then this wealthy New York family, and then the kind of one in the center, which is like the police detective one, they kind of bounce back and forth and have their own little ecosystem um, <clears throat> as well. And so there's just, you know, it's a true ensemble piece. And so all these stories are intertwining and folding into and around one another. So I definitely think sort of the detail work of that, which Ed crafted together in a great way, um, uh, is something I think, yeah, you have to continue to track throughout the show. Um, but I do think kind of for me where, it, where it, it lands is kind of, is the idea of, you know, the decisions that this family made 20 years ago and how that impacted this group, these teenagers essentially who are like coming to New York for an opportunity and then getting enmeshed and trapped in something that they kind of were like, huh, how am I involved in something that I have been in, in a way before I was even born? And now I'm like facilitating these things. And so to me, it's the, the connectivity of like the two, ex two extremes and, and uh, of the world. Um, but it, you know, karmically things all come together. We not, none of us exist in a vacuum. We all exist in connection with one another even if it feels far away, we are still in the same ecosystem um, of our society, of our world. And, and so, yeah, to me, that's where the show ends is like, we are, as, as far as we think we are, we are all connected. If you could describe Inspector Borat um, in a sentence or three words, what would you say? I would say he is the best looking American that's ever existed. No, I would say that he uh, he is uh, he's somebody who well, I don't know, it's so hard because he is like somebody, it's like in the context of Mel, Zazie's character or in the, I think he's somebody who who is like everybody else in this show is somehow corrupted and unaware of their corruption and doesn't realize that that karma is comes full circle and so like similar to like mel like you know of breaking boundaries and uh you know with her girlfriend you know and similar to like sam claire dane's character you know, doing something illegal that eventually comes back and gets her, and 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 uh, you know, with uh, Timothy's character, you know, the the you know, like even the airtight kind of like non-disclosure agreement around the child out of wedlock. It's like it's gonna come out. 
like all the you know there's consequences for your actions you know what i mean it's like so funny because it's like a constant theme I, I have teenagers it's like trying to communicate consequences but like it's really humans we're constantly learning that that there are consequences Absolutely. And where would you say that we find Inspector Brewer at the beginning of Full Circle versus where we are left with him? I would say at the beginning, he is. I think he we find him as this. Mid-level boss who's dealing with, uh, you know, an employee that is maybe a maverick. He's also like this Gen X guy who is dealing with a millennial that doesn't want to wait their turn. That's why we meet him. At the end, he is somebody um, who, you know, is kind of exposed of all his secrets, but eventually, uh, you know, you know, I think like on the raid, like hit what he does on the raid, like he doesn't know his limitations and that ends up getting him killed. You know what I mean? And the, the um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, everyone's blind spot is kind of, it can be deadly, right? And so his blind spot, like, you know, he, you know, it's over the course of the thing, you know, he's eating burritos and pizza and it's like, he shouldn't be climbing over fences. You know what I mean? Like there are people, there's like 50 people that went in the house that are equipped to do that. But he, um, ego kind of gets in his way. Yeah. And he is basically like the boss that no one wants to have, whether it's through his micromanaging skills and whatnot. But more than that, he's super like a little bit suspicious. So why do you think it was imperative to showcase those different layers of your character for those watching? There's just a complexity. It's not as, you know, like Mel has this view of him that you know, the way she describes Manny to her girlfriend that, you know, I think the viewer's suspicious about. And there's, like, the fact that he doesn't turn in the psych eval is really, he doesn't do that because he wants to have leverage over her. I think that, like, there's different shades to everyone. Like, there's different sides. It's not you know, good or bad. It's just, there's, you know, from Mel's perspective, he is bad. But like, even her perspective of herself is, you know, it's not the psych eval that brings her down. It's her own undoing, right? I know I'm kind of, you know, blathering on, but hopefully I'm making no, you're good. And where, did, what kind of a space did you have to pull from to bring Manny to life? Well, you know, some of it is, I think it was in the writing. Um, you know, constructing a, a character based on, you know, what he does over six episodes and what people say about your character can be really informative but i also i also intentionally wanted hopefully to build some empathy from the viewer at the beginning so that something to counterbalance what mel was saying about him but you know some of it it was just it was in the dialogue and it's weird because there's some there's like one scene that really wasn't that I, I'm kind of bummed wasn't in there, but, um, you know, you, but you have no control over what, uh, as an actor, what goes in there. And so you, uh, you kind of work with what you got and then you find it in yourself. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I'm not much like Manny, but I can, uh, I can identify, you know, like I've never, you know, 
pulled off, uh, you know, uh, you know, some uh, whatever the embezzlement or the the Escabo colony kind of corruption that he did. But like, we all have stuff that we kind of just justify. So I just had to assume that he, you know, out of sight, out of mind until, you know, like the the most panicked he is, is when he's talking to Sam Claire Danes in the park. But once she says that she has nothing, he's, you know, again, it goes back to not being an issue for him. Yeah. And lastly here, as much as Full Circle is a story about the complexities of human nature, it's also one centered around family and the lengths people will go through to sometimes protect their own or protect themselves. How does this lie true for Manny? Well, I think for Manny, he is, um, he's always, uh, he's always looking out for himself and that the, 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 he sees the family thing as much more of a burden. Right. And, um, you know, like the ambition that made him take down Gene McCasker is, you know, I don't see his ambition as, um, being the same at the end you know it's much more um he wants to do the raid because of ego and he wants to chase after garmin harry at the end because of ego much more than um you know being a hero to his daughter like he's not really thinking of his family when he's chasing after garmin harry or waiting for backup it's He's thinking more of ego. So it's much more he's thinking of himself. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your... If you had to describe your character, Derek, in three words or sentence, what would you have to say? The man is in trouble. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And speaking of trouble, where would you say we find him at the beginning of Full Circle versus where we are left with him in the end? Well, I don't want to give away any endings, but I'll tell you when you find him, uh, boy, he's when I first started reading the script, he seemed like he was the grounded level headed one. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a show if he was, I guess, but he's got some secrets and uh, I don't think he's going to be able to keep them under wraps. Yeah. And how would you say those secrets are proof like that we all have secrets, right? But the more you try to keep them hidden, the more they're just waiting to burst at the seams. Right. I mean, they always say it's it's not the uh, the first mistake. It's 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 trying to cover it up. It's the trying to cover it up that always gets you. Yes. And as much as this is a story about the complexities of human nature, if you will, it's also one that's centered around family and the lengths people will go through to protect their own. How does this ring true for Derek and his loved ones specifically? Well, I think he tragically generally seems to love everybody in his life and, and is trying desperately to hold that family together. He just made a terrible mistake. And um it's it's um it's just kind of tragic, you know. Um but he seemed like a it's one of those things, despite this <laughs> I remember I told my wife what he about the, the character and the show. She's like, you know, she basically was like, he's awful. <laughs> I was like, is he? I was like, he's really trying hard. <laughs> Yeah. And and despite him being, quote unquote, like awful on paper or what we see um, on the screen, can you tell me why it's important to showcase those qualities, like you mentioned, of him trying to love everyone in his life to kind of maybe humanize him a bit more for for viewers? Well, I mean, you know, that's I mean, that's usually what makes great drama, right, is the contradictions is um it's the contradictions that make make characters and people so fascinating that they're capable of doing these two things and not seeing how um they just are completely at odds with one another 
Um, and I can think of countless examples of people, both you know, in the, in the public eye and and uh, people I've met over the years that are that do it. It's it's fascinating every single time, you know. Um, it's what makes great drama. Yeah, and I wanted to know in bringing Derek to life, has this been any kind of a full circle moment for you, if you will, and breathing life into a character who is as complex as he is? Well, on a personal level, how this show is full, brought something full circle for me? Yes. Well, I mean, when I first started acting, I just desperately wanted to work with people like Steven Soderbergh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that I've now worked with Steven Soderbergh kind of brings it all around, makes it quite a trip. I, I'm, um, you know, if I could afford to retire, I it wouldn't, I'd, I'd be okay. Um, because, uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. And uh, when I first started first started this journey i kept thinking well maybe if i you know play my cards right and work hard i'll be able to work with uh someone like him yes and lastly i wanted to know what has been the biggest lesson that you have may may have personally learned from derek and taking him from paper to the screen you know i'm guilty of not really and I don't know if it's, you know, I always ask myself the same question. Is this, do I really not think about the character? Because I feel like mostly what I do is just play the game of how to play the scenes. Mm. And and then trust that the accumulation of all those scenes make a character. I, I What I come away from these jobs are always, um, are are more about, how gratifying it was to collaborate with the people I got to collaborate with, to spend time with those people and being around Steven Soderbergh, working with Claire Danes. They make, those people make quite an impression on me. And I take those things with me. Uh, and I don't take those experiences lightly um, because they're, they, they just don't make them like that very often. Uh, it's very special to be around them. It's very special to watch them work and, you know, and learn from them. 